A hundred years ago now, in 1997, some Danish entomologists, or bug boys, wanted to do a weird experiment. What they were going to do is drive along the same section of road over and over and count up all the bug impacts on their windshield. They then did this for 20 years. After doing so, they tallied up the results from those two decades and what they found was pretty striking. Over that time, bug impacts on their windshield had decreased by 80%. This phenomenon, as it was replicated around the world, became known as the windshield phenomenon. And you've probably noticed it too. I remember a time when any serious amount of driving meant a serious amount of bugs on the windshield, but I don't see that anymore. Where have all the bugs gone? Well, where they've gone is extinct, or they soon will be. You see, we're at the beginning of an insect apocalypse. The question is, are we going to do anything to stop it? Now entering the facility. A mass extinction, in historical and biological terms, is a short period in Earth's history in which 75% of species go extinct. Now, scientists disagree, as all good scientists sometimes do, but it seems that Earth has gone through five of these mass extinction events so far. The last one wiped out the dino boys. Unfortunately, it wasn't the last mass extinction. It's now generally accepted that we are at the beginning of the sixth great mass extinction event. It's caused by humans, and it might be the first one to really affect the six-legged arthropods among us. Do you mean Elon Musk? <laughs> no, Arya. Arthropods have much more discernible body segments. In just the last 10,000 years, the human population on Earth has exploded from maybe 1 million to 7.8 billion. This exponential increase brought with it deforestation, pollution, and insatiable appetites. Nature, as entomologist David Wagner puts it, is under siege. If we truly live in the Anthropocene, an age defined by humanity's outsized effect on the planet, the loss of biology is one of the biggest pieces of evidence. It's been estimated that 83% of wild mammal biomass has been lost since the rise of human civilization. 83%. Out of all mammals on Earth, most of them are livestock. Humans are nearly the rest. All the wild mammals on Earth, every bunny and fox, every whale and bat and polar bear you've ever seen, comprise just 4% of all existing mammals. These are just the animals we tend to focus on. And I get that. Cats are cute, giant water bugs, maybe not so much. But the bugs are in a bad spot too. We are losing insect species at a greater than normal rate, one that evolution cannot keep up with and ecologies cannot sustain. We will get to why it's so hard to estimate how many insects are or soon will be gone, but all the numbers are concerning. 75% less insects caught in traps, 80% fewer monarch butterflies overwintering in Mexico. According to a February 2020 study in the journal Biological Conservation, the world has lost between 5 to 10% of all insects in the last 150 years. That's between a quarter and half a million species. When entomologists were asked to rate the severity of this apparent insect decline crisis, 24 of them across six continents rated it between an 8 and a 10. Oh, and just a note here, I'm using the terms insect and bug interchangeably in this video even though they are technically distinct because I have an entomologist friend that I want to annoy. Don't worry, he's obviously fine. Just look at him. God, I hate you so much. Even if you're not a bug boy like myself, the sixth mass extinction should scare you. Reported rates in the annual decline of animal abundance fall around 1-2%. to Doesn't sound like much, until you realize that this means, within your lifetime, one-third of the entire tree of animal life will be lost. As one article in Biological Reviews puts it, quote, the prognosis for the survival of a large portion of extant species is not good. We are pessimistic about the fate of most of the Earth's biodiversity, much of which is going to vanish without us ever knowing of its existence. Um, yeesh. Now, I know what you might be thinking. But Kyle, bugs are icky. Why should I care? Well, whether you know it or not, Arya, 
everything needs bugs. My coat doesn't need any more bugs, thank you very much. <laughs> Ari, I don't mean that kind of bug. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Like them or not, insects are the structural and foundational base of most of the world's food webs, and all of those food webs would collapse without them. 87% of plants need pollinators. Most of those are insects. 75% of humans' crops need pollination from insects. They get rid of organic matter, like the ball of Twitter posts you see on your screen now. They aerate the soil. They disperse seeds. Insects make the honey that you keep in your cupboard for three years without using it once. How did bugs get so dang important? Well, put simply, uh, they're so important by default because most animals are insects. Hey, so you know mammals? like all of mammals, any mammal that you can think of, there are more species of ladybug than species of mammal. There are more species of weevil than fish. Have you ever even seen one of these little dudes? Insects account for more than 90% of all known animal species. There are more than 1 million known insects, and it's estimated that we have millions of animals yet to discover. You can put money on most of those being bugs too. Despite this, Insects are still probably pretty low down on your concern list. But why? Well, bugs have two big problems. The first is that insects aren't cute. No, no, really. When we do surveys of animals and we think about conservation, we tend to focus on the charismatic megafauna, like polar bears and tigers and my friend Phil here, who again, I hate very much. And so when we do surveys of nature and try to find endangered species, we often overlook the bugs. Just take a look at this graph behind me that points out this bias. On the left, you see the number of species described. On the right, you see the number of species that have been assessed for endangeredness status. Do you, you see any small discrepancy here? Insects are most living animals, and yet they are the least looked after. Arguably, these animals are more important to ecosystems than any bird or parrot or other mammal that I can't think of, like Phil. God, I hate him so much. Oh, I love you. It's not all bias, though. Bugs are hard to find. Many species of insects we know of may only be based on a single individual a grad student found and poked a needle through. No, I'm not joking. And insects are even harder to find when they are dead. Bugs don't have bones and don't get buried by sediment on the ocean floor, and therefore don't leave behind anything like a fossil you'd find of a dinosaur or ancient nautilus, if they leave behind anything at all. Combine this with the fact that the proportion of undescribed insect species might be as high as 80%, and it's very likely that thousands upon thousands of insect species have already gone extinct, or soon will under the Anthropocene. It's a silent apocalypse. Again, we don't see this reflected in the data we've gathered because, you know, bugs icky and tigers are fluffy. Until they bite you in the neck. How did we get here? Unfortunately, for the most abundant and arguably most important animals on Earth, it's been death by a thousand cuts. Climate change, pollution, deforestation, pesticides, and more. By most accounts, because of human activity, we are now at the beginning of the sixth great mass extinction event on this planet, and the insects are at risk. If they go, so too does nature as we know it. So what do we do? Well, other than just generally raising awareness about the issue like we're trying to do today, this is where Planet Wild comes in. I want to introduce you to a community-financed rewilding organization that touches grass to protect biodiversity worldwide, Planet Wild. It's a global community of people that want to give back to nature by funding frontline ecosystem restoration projects. Think of it like crowdfunding Mother Nature's hospital bill. Each month, Planet Wild selects a new project to protect animals, forests, and oceans. And they document their missions with video reports so that you can immediately see the impact of your contribution and where it is going. By its sheer scale, the unused land that exists underneath power lines presents possibly the biggest rewilding opportunity in the world. 
I want to bring your attention specifically to a recent mission to turn the barren scars of land beneath power lines into insect highways. If you want to see more, the link is in the description. I think it's a fantastic local initiative. In fact, it's the entire reason I'm making this video. You know, they used to call me the bug kid back in school, and supporting this mission is kind of like me coming full circle. All of Planet Wild's work is made possible by a community of nature enthusiasts like you and me. The resources of our community can do more than you think. Give whatever monthly amount, big or small, feels right to you. You'll see the results every month in YouTube videos that uh, often get more views than mine. If you want to join a growing community that makes a real difference, go check out Planet Wild through the link in the description or by scanning this QR code on screen and consider becoming a supporter. As a special gift, I'll cover the first month of your Planet Wild membership if you're among the first 150 people signing up with the code KYLE7. And I know you sign up for too many things already, so don't worry, you can cancel at any time and it's easy. You're welcome. I and the rest of the facility will be over at Planet Wild doing the best we can to give a helping hand, or six, to the bugs. And we'll be on the lookout for other issues that can raise awareness about the thousands of cuts the insects are currently enduring. It's a small step back from the brink, yes I know, but it's a step nonetheless. I don't have to touch them though, do I? <laughs> no, Aria. Just because a, it's a bug doesn't mean it has to be a feature. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> All the bugs are dying! Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to see videos early, if you want monthly private live streams with yes truly, you can go to the link you see on screen and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on ARIA and in every single video, lucky you. And as you can see, there's already hundreds and thousands. How am I ever gonna pass this? So when I was a kid, I was called the bug kid, both by my mother and by people that I went to school with. So I would go out in the backyard, I would catch bugs, I would go out in the little ponds and little uh, creeks and I would collect the water and look for little hydras and stuff. My crowning achievement as the bug kid was once I found a praying mantis and I put it in a, in a cup and I showed it to people. They didn't like it. But to me, the praying mantis for a kid living in the Midwest was like an exotic only on discovery type bug. And ever since that moment, I have loved insects. They are critical to our ecosystem and the infrastructure, unseen though it may be. So you should care about the bugs. Or else you make the bug kids sad. That's me. Thanks for watching. Ha, got you.